everyone, welcome to this video Sound Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and today I would like to show you something that um, actually looks a lot more tatty now, I've got some light on it, but never mind. Now what I'm showing you, sorry I'm in my dressing gown's in the road, um, what I'm showing you here is, um, well it's a classic ThinkPad. But this ThinkPad is not only classic, it's also very small and has actually got a single spindle design just like the X24 has when it's undocked. However, this is not an X-series ThinkPad. What this is, is a 560. Moreover, it's the 560Z, the last of the breed before they moved on to the 600. I can only assume that the 600 would, um, would have been the um, successor to this machine, although the, um, the 600s are at least dual spindle. So I, I really couldn't tell you, actually. I like to think this was a predecessor to an X-series machine. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, unfortunately this one's kind of been through the mill a wee bit. There's quite a lot of kind of scratches there on the lid. Sure I could probably get rid of those with a magic eraser. Um, this ThinkPad does not have a rubberized lid. Plastic. Now, you probably might be thinking, oh, cheap plastic. But, as collectors of older ThinkPads will tell you, rubber does warp. I mean, Elmo 3, his, um, in his videos, had to actually use talcum powder on his ThinkPads. So, yeah, it does. It actually really does. Um, so basically, um, what you end up with is a Windows 98 computer that smells of a freshly washed baby's bottom. Right. So, what we have here is Elmo 3 and Billy. The, hey. The reason we have Billy is because he recently got another machine that IBM put out that's part of the same generation of uh, that uh, my 560Z belongs to. He, of course, has the 380Z. Um, he enjoys using it in snowstorms, sat outside okay. on the porch. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I had a roof over me. Well, yeah. But the machine got too cold and froze, literally. Yeah. Um, well, 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 I kept a CPU over me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, of course, Elmol 3 is here because, of course, it's a ThinkPad. Oh, yeah. I got me here. And to yeah. be, you know, to be honest, you know, us ThinkPad users kind of have to stick together. Yeah. Especially in the face of adversary in uh, the form of Dell Latitude users. <laughs> Kidding on. You know, actually, it's, um, you know, for my uh, latest machine, it was, it was either between a Dell Latitude or a ThinkPad, and the ThinkPad was cheaper, so... I actually went and bought the ThinkPad. It could have been anybody's. It could have been anybody's uh, competition. Though Dell Latitudes are very good machines, as are ThinkPads. So it's like you know, whichever one you feel that you prefer to go for. You know, I guess it's all kind of down to how they look because I'm internally, it's like you know, your competing ThinkPads and Dells are pretty much the same nowadays. <clears throat> the important thing is buy a business class machine. Yeah, really. Um, so if it's a Latitude, if it's a Tecra, if it's a Travel Mate, if it's a ThinkPad, yeah, they're all good. Although, I'd have to lean more towards Lenovo ThinkPad or Dell's Latitude. Yeah, just for those You know, even over the Tecra and the Travel Mate uh, from Toshiba and Acer. Anyway, back to this ThinkPad. It's a 560X that needs some attention from a magic eraser. Let's have a wee look on the sides. On the left hand side, 
you have the power switch. I like having the power switch on the outside if, you know, in, in um, the idea is if you dock the machine, you wouldn't have to lift the lid up to actually power it on. You could just kind of flick this button here and it'll do it. Then you have this pull down cover. That opens to reveal a proprietary connector, which can be used to connect something like a floppy disk drive, which I actually have a floppy disk drive for a 600E. So I can use that. Now I've yet to discover what this does on the front. I don't think it's the infrared port though, because the infrared port I'm pretty sure is on the side. Then you have the lead catch, and then really nothing else on the front. Now on the other side, there's another uh, there's another wee door. You uh, open that up to reveal two PC MCIA Type Two or one Type Three slot. Next to it, we have the infrared port. Then we have headphone and microphone parts. On the rear of the machine, again, it doesn't look like there's anything there. However, now this is where things start to get a wee bit crazy. Because you might be expecting at this point that I actually pull down a door to reveal um, a sorted I.O. Well, I am going to reveal a sorted I.O. But when I pull this, it actually comes right off. And it doesn't seem... I don't think there's any tire marks. It, it doesn't seem... Actually, I really don't know. But, I mean, this this part comes off rather than, you know, kind of going down. That could easily get lost. I don't like that design. Um, right, okay. So, with that, with that wee rubber uh, thing away, what we have is um, VGA part, IEEE-1284 parallel part, and a DB9 serial part. But, this is where you can kind of tell the breed of the ThinkPad, because if we look at these pens, they're gold-plated. That is amazing. I like that. Gold-plated pens are actually... And, and if you're wondering why, why gold-plated pens, it's not because of the bling factor. I mean, when you've got a machine that looks like this, bling doesn't really come into it. No. The reason that people go for gold-plated connectors is because the connector won't oxidise as badly, if at all. Gold is a lot lower on the reactivity series than, what, uh, steel or tin or any other... Yeah. <coughs> you know. Um, go back to your uh, standard grade chemistry books, children. Anyway. Um, <coughs> so, we also have a USB port. Everybody, just the one... No, literally, <laughs> there is only one USB port. <laughs> but then again, it's a small, it's a small ThinkPad from the nineties, so I can forget, forgive it. Then there's a PS2 mouse. Um, I don't know if it's. Oh yeah, I think it's uh, just mouse only actually. PS2 mouse part, and then the power, uh, then the power DC N. So I suppose I should probably show you the floppy drive. Like I said, I was given a 600E for uh, something that I was hoping to set up with action on disability. And here's the floppy drive, and here's the connector, and yes, it does work with this particular machine, which was very useful when it came to installing Windows. This machine came with a few games and what have you on it, but um, you know my policy is, whenever I get a new machine, I always do a clean reinstall. I don't want other people's data on it. I don't want other people's... You don't want to end up with a B-Bitch PCM video ranting about how people don't take their data seriously. Yeah. yeah, I mean, guys, if if you if you're wondering, you know, what's one of the better way, what's one of uh, what's a good way to get rid of your data, please feel free to watch my video on how to deban a hard disk. I usually eat them. Yeah, you yeah, Billy usually eats the hard disk, and then he complains to us. He's like. Well, I got a Packard Bell, but I don't have any spare dang hard disks to put in it. <laughs> yeah, not, not to mention the uh, medical 
the medical fees, and, 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 the, and the pain of eating said hard drive. The pain of eating said hard drive, medical bills, the fact that you no longer have a format number, or a pbspec.bin <laughs> file. Um, so you can't actually see if the machine exceeded all test parameters. Yeah. <laughs> right, this, this floppy drive is actually uh, giving me a bit of a headache. Now, I'm trying to reconnect it to the machine. This is very fiddly, actually, I, I will be honest. Um, and it also actually helps to have the cable the right way up. Uh, there we go. That's... <laughs> <laughs> See now this machine being single spindle, I've got it connected to a whole bunch of drives. Look at that, you know, CD drive, floppy drive. Um, I like to use a mouse, so uh, that gets plugged in as well. There we go, and then we plug in some power. Excellent. So the machine is all set up and ready to use. And the floppy drive is ready to slide off of the table. Brilliant. So, what we're going to do is... Let's have a look inside the machine. See, now, inside the machine, it's a whole, lot, it's a whole other story than the outside of the machine. If we have a look at things like the space bar, we see that there's, it's not shiny. Okay, there's maybe a wee bit of shine. Looks like it kind of may have been used. But really, compared to the outside of the machine, it's, it's almost like there's two different... This is a machine of multiple personalities, really. Except there seems to be a hair stuck in the screen or something. Oh, got rid of it. That's fixed it. Anyway, now that I've done that, what I will do is I'll adjust the tripod and flip off the camera light, and then we'll power on. All right. So we're ready to actually power on. Now I have actually previously reinstalled Windows on this. So you can just um, switch it on. Takes a couple of seconds for the screen to come up. So the specs of this machine, what are we dealing with? Well, this machine has a Pentium 2 processor running at 233 MHz, backed up by 64 megs of RAM. Hard disk is a 4 gig affair, um, and it uses NeoMagic Magigraph 128, I believe, XD graphics. And it's got a crystal, uh, crystal audio sound driver. Now, let me tell you something a bit special about this machine. It was built in Scotland. Oh, there you go. That's right. <clears throat> like a lot of IBMs of the, like a lot of IBMs of the nineties, this one was built in the Greenock factory, which was brilliant. In fact, I used to know someone who worked on that in that factory. I think she worked there in nineteen ninety seven. So Sheila built the three eighty D that I used to have. And maybe the 380E. She, well, it was obviously a factory line, so she'd have added a component to it. But it, it just amazes me how you can work in a computer factory building the things all day. And Yeah. I, I just checked my uh, thing had 380C and built in Mexico. Yeah, there were some that were built in Mexico. And it's, it's like... Scotland's ThinkPads, you could get them exported. Well, Scotland's ThinkPads, some of them would actually go to America. Whereas some Mexican ThinkPads would come over here. You see, I've had two 600s. I had a Scottish one, which was fantastic. I gave it away. Um, and, I, and then I've had a Mexican one, which... It was horrible. Then again, that could have been more down to how the two machines were treat, treated. You know, they might have been tracked completely differently. So, let's not um, let's not dwell on which ThinkPad is built better than what just yet, and instead have a a mini test. Ugh. 
So, I think, I think we're actually going to go for something different. Well, I love that video. Unfortunately, the speaker on this thing is terrible. But actually, it gives me a chance to, um, actually, it gives me a chance to uh, do another video that I've been meaning to do since January. What is it? Ah, uh, you'll see. That would be telling, wouldn't it? <laughs> so, and the reason that Elmo 3 is here, because not only is this a ThinkPad, it's a ThinkPad running Office 97. Yes. <laughs> so, um... Right, okay, so I'm gonna type something. So, oops. <laughs> right, I just need to buy. Excellent. So, what this message says is um, if you are told by Elmo3 during the recession that you had one job, well done. That's one more job than a lot of folk had. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can save it. All the mod cons. Right. There's also um, Microsoft Publisher 98. I didn't do the full install because I'd still be here at Christmas waiting on it. Seriously, that takes ages. Full install of Publisher. I remember I remember seeing this version of Publisher for the first time. It was completely different. I mean, I'd... I'd went at school from Publisher 2 to Publisher 98. You can make websites on this. Serious websites. Yeah. Well, that's the theory. I'm not seeing any website. Oh, there it is. Yep. There we go. Websites. So I guess we could make a small website. This is pretty good, actually. It's... I always find the long pages to be quite funny because I'm you know so used to seeing a foreign publisher so let's pick blue for the color oh, quite you paper cut let's have a story let's have a calendar let's have an event um related links yeah maybe um do we want an order form actually ah uh, Oh, wizard made the change he requested. You know what? We'll we'll have um. Yeah, we'll have a sign up form instead. Um, both the vertical and horizontal var. Just let's just have a vertical one. And uh, would you like a sound to be played when your page is opened? Maybe. Could have like the cute fake cat. A texture applied to the pages of your website. Yeah, texture because it's a game. Now, so what we can do now is we can preview it, and that's a way um, preparing the website for preview. There you have it, along with a what looks like a three DO logo. So there you have it. The uh, and I do actually have some bad news, guys. Um, talking about websites. After um, after six and a half years in service, J Wakefield Computers will be closing sometime this month. 
Hang on, not Jay Wakefield Computer. Jay Wakefield dot com. Jay Wakefield Computers closed two years ago. Oh, that's a shame. Jay Wakefield. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I've not used it as much as I should have done. My blog. I I don't blog as much. My depression has got so bad that, you know, I find it difficult to do much of anything. And, you know, when you're laid up in bed with depression a lot of the time, what the hell do you blog about? It's like, it just becomes, oh, this day I was in bed. That day I was in bed. The other day I was in bed. Oh. Yeah, that's how it's, that's how it's been for me for a good while lately, but, um... Hopefully, uh, Lord willing, uh, that may change this week. I'm not going to go into details explaining what's happening, but um, if this does come to, pa to pass, um, you will find out. Oh, right. Oh, yes, yes. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Exa I know exactly what's happening. You see, what is happening is Billy's going to be buying me a compact uh, LTE 475 uh, CX Elite. Nah, Trust me, if I could, Jay, I, if I could, Jay, I'd do it in a heartbeat. You deserve it. No, I don't, but thanks anyway. <laughs> make a good video anyway. At the very least, it would actually make a good video. Sorry, I forgot to plug my CD-ROM drive in, so that's what I've just done now. So you heard the sound of a PC card initialising. Um, and the, There's a good reason I plugged in this CD drive. Um, we're actually going to install some soft software. Oh, uh, yeah, it's always fun to do. So what we're away to do is we're actually away to install Kedpex Studio. And this is a lot like Kedpex, actually it's Kedpex Deluxe or Kedpex Pex Studio, I can't even mind what it is. This is like the previous versions of Kedpex that I've actually shown off in my channel, but it does have some differences and it has a couple more features. Now, this Kedpex Studio Deluxe was actually... Um, the installer says the learning company at the bottom right. Now, some of you will be thinking, but... But, Jay, I thought Kidpix was made by Broderband. Well, you'd be right. It was. But then, of course, the learning company had to come along and be like... Ooh, I like the look of that. Can I buy it, please? And the deal was done. <laughs> Once this video is published, I'm going to have to isolate that clip of you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's not an empty threat. My uh, Dropbox is full of bits of isolated sound bites from past videos, including "Yay, purple place, that one." And, um... <laughs> Scan desk. Thank you! Congratulations, you've won a free turn. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Congratulations, you've won a free turn. <laughs> and a lot of these funny sounds all tend to come from compact videos. I know. So it's, it's a bit of a change having one that's came out of a, a ThinkPad video. Although Parable Place, that, that actually came out of the... Uh, Dell Optiplex 360 that I was um, actually building for a mutual friend of uh, Kaz's and mine. Yeah, I remember that. That was a failure. Yeah, that was a failure. Yeah, 360, it's a uh, predecessor to what I've got now. 3, 380. Except this one was a tower. Mine's is a desktop. Good machines, actually. They really are. Of course, the Paramount Galaxy had the 330. And <laughs> Him unboxing that was brilliant. It was just basically a swearing match. Yeah. If you were to show it on British television, it would just literally be... You'd think that he spoke in Morse code. Yeah. 
Because the British are like, We don't allow swearing on our television screens. Mm. Well, I mean, they do have some, but not that many, you know. It's... Then you go to the US and they censor everything. Oh, seriously. It's pathetic. I mean, some people are like, mm, well, if you swear, it means it means that you're not got good language count in your grammar and certain language counts for language. <laughs> but I think, well, you know, if you're doing it, if you're using artistic license with it, you know, a TV, you know, if you're using it in a fictional TV show, you know, and you want to try and portray the grittiness of a situation, then really. You know, people would be swearing in that kind of situation. So why should they not swear? It'd be like, you know, <laughs> it's like you have an action scene. See, it's like, get back, you melon. <laughs> so I know, I know, I stole that from Peter Kay, but yeah, it's it's true. You know, it's like. <laughs> Shut your moo! I fear I blow it off! <laughs> this is actually taking a lot longer than I expected it would. This machine does seem to be quite slow. I'm just maybe not... Just ma I'm just maybe not used to Windows 98 on a 233 anymore. It might be um, the RAM or maybe the hard drive. Could be the hard drive. Don't know. Although the hard drive seems to be in reasonable health. I mean, I didn't hear any sinister sounds coming from it. Yeah. You know. I didn't hear anything like kerklunk, 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 kerklunk. <laughs> Which normally, you know, that'd be a, you know, that would be one of the uh, cruxes of these older IBMs because um, they have a habit of using IBM hard drives. Yeah. Can't understand why IBM would use IBM hard drives personally, but um, you know, if if you uh, feel that yeah, you know the answer, please write to um, BBC Television uh, because I really don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, write to BBC Television. So then you know they'll have to spend all the time going through your mail asking why IBM would put their own hard disks into their computers, and less time trying to corrupt the result of the upcoming general election. Oh yes, I went there. Oh, and talking of which, because I'm an evil cybernat, spelt with a Z, that's why I got this machine, because it has a Z on the end. 560Z. Just like nuts. <laughs> now when we get on. Well, remember the, those um, games from the late 90s? I, I played these all the time back then, like dogs, cats. Oh, yeah, yeah. I played, I, I played dogs. Two on the on a Dell Attitude CPX one, so I can't even mind if I did it for Blue Planet or whether I did it for Video Song Frontier. I can't remember, but those were those were some really good games. What's quite interesting about Dogs Two is that it will not install under Windows ME. It thinks that, yeah, yeah. you see what it is. <clears throat> it must be one of those that um, looks for my Windows Nine as the Windows version, you know, so that could be 95 or 98. Uh-huh. But would end up with Windows M instead for Windows ME, Millennium Edition. Yeah, so it basically go, oh, what are we doing? Uh, what it actually does is tells you that it can't run under Windows NT. Right. You see, and it's things like that that have actually led to people incorrectly believing that Windows Millennium Edition is actually based on the NT kernel. <laughs> Which it isn't. It, oh, it's, it's definitely not. <laughs> Windows 2000 Professional is. In fact, it says it when you boot it up. Windows 2000 Professional built on NT technology. Or as someone I knew from school used to say, built on Neanderthal technology. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people would say that, saying that um, the current versions of um, Windows Net uses essentially the, the same um, kernel and code as Windows NT 3.1. Well, they actually rebuilt it for Vista. They were originally going to 
you know, save that. But after the Summer of Worms in 2003, they actually decided to start, you know, they actually decided to go back to the drawing board with Windows Vista and they rebuilt it. Yeah. From the ground up. This is actually why Vista took so long to uh, RTM. Um, they were rebuilding the whole thing. Yeah, they were. Re- they decided to rebuild it because you know of the problems that you know MS Blast and Sobeg gave uh, gave everyone in two thousand three. You know what's hard to believe is um, the the first when um, Windows Vista was originally called um, in data Windows uh, Longboard, but then it um, but then. Um, it, it became Windows Vista, I think, in the summer of 2005. So yeah, it was. It was. We're, a, we're, we're coming up on 10 years of the new <clears> Windows Vista. Hard to believe. I remember that. I I remember that actually because um, I acquired a copy perfectly legally actually. <laughs> <laughs> um. I acquired a copy of uh, Beta 1 of Vesta, and the first thing I realized, and uh, you'd think you, you just wouldn't even dream of running it on that, but I mean, I ran it on my 2004 custom belt, which was a Athlon XP 3000 clocked at 2.1 gigahertz uh, with 256 mm. megs of RAM. 256 megabytes of memory. Mm. Now, I know Vesta will run on a lot less because you've got people that like to kind of do this, you know, punish like Windows Vesta and Windows 7 by trying to install them onto Pentium 3s, but yeah. Anyway, we're in kid pics. We're looking at you, Power Man. Uh, oh yeah, he he uh, he installed Windows Vesta to a Dell Latitude, Latitude oh. CPI. And he installed Windows um, <laughs> C, uh, he installed Windows 7 on us Latitude C610 on an SSD. I once actually saw... I once actually did see some... Uh, something um, that was quite disturbing. Someone had actually put Vesta on a C610. I, just, I was just like, no. Anyway, on with uh, on with Kid Picks. So, this is a slightly different version. The music that uh, was heard when booting into it uh, was different. <clears throat> but now you actually have six options. Wacky TV, Kid Picks, Slideshow. Slideshow was in, in version 2.5, but it was a separate program that you'd launch. Moopies, um, Stamp, Stampinator, or Digital Puppets. Mm. Now, Wacky TV... Choose a movie to watch. Uh, so, I think um, let's have a look. You, shall we? Shall we look at flybys? Um, let's have a look at a castle. That is pretty cool. It kind of looks like a Super Mario sixty four level, actually. That is but these these movies are just kind of short clips. They're a lot better than the ones that came with uh, came with Kid Picks two point five though in terms of resolution. Um. So. Uh, I think you can have uh, the smaller resolution. So. I wonder if the. Um, What's this? Cluck Gal. Make it stop! I'll be back in a minute. So, let's now go into, um... Paint a picture. Kid picks, and it's actually telling you what you're away to do. Paint a picture. Now, can actually uh, speak. Pick a voice. Matt, Lucinda, June, Tresha, Ed, Mandy, Andrew, Christine. 
Let's choose Mandy. Yeah, but like Mandy. Ugh. Let's try Lucinda. Lol. <laughs> Matt sounds the best, actually. Let's try Joe. Oh my goodness! All of these sound like they've had a full front all about me. Ed sounds pretty good, actually. I'll go with Ed. Now I don't know what to do in the speech. Um, oh, read text aloud. So I guess I need to stick some text in. Um, would be an idea if I knew how to do that. Come on. Alphabet text. I mean, I know how to do the letter stamps, but I'm not sure that's what it means. Jay? Yeah? Sorry, I thought I heard you call my name. Oh well. Jay? You, you did it again. What do you want? Seriously, answer me. Why? Because I said so. You? Yeah, what about me? Jay? Yeah, that's what that's what my name is. Anyway. <laughs> A. Why? So that's, um, but obviously that doesn't in invoke the text thing because it's, the stamp's not. Right. So, uh, I guess what I can do is, um, there's all sorts that we can do here. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been messing about actually quite a lot with kid picks on the uh, LTE. Um. So let's play some of the things that actually invoke some of my favourite sounds. Because I think that's the best way to do it. Here's a Luke approved one. Yes, I like that one a lot. And I like... Nice, ambient noise. I quite like this one because it reminds me of kids TV programmes in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Oh, look! It's a rainbow! <laughs> <laughs> Derpy English BBC presenters. Very good, children. <laughs> Very good, children. Now, who would like to see the magical ice cream van? Yay! I'd like to see the magical ice cream van! I don't know. There's no such thing. But, yeah. That, if, if I do see a children's program involving a magical ice cream van, that's mine, and you need to leave off it, because plagiarism, plagiarism is just like you. Because, as Colt would say, you bet, 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 you bet. I'm back, I'm lucky. Oh, you've just missed an English TV program involving a magic ice cream van. Anyway. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Ah, I found a text. I found text. Right, so. I think you guys can see where I'm going to be going with this. So, ThinkPad, what are you thinking? Okay, it's cool. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh. We just got stuck together, right enough. Anyway, um, all right. Now I'm guessing I can actually move this text box. There we go. And then I can actually resize it. 
There we go. And then. Vote for the Scottish National Party in the general election. Jay is cool. <laughs> Let's try reading that out in another voice. What about Christine? I've not tried her voice yet. <laughs> there we go. You heard it from the think you heard it from the Scottish Think Pad. Vote yeah. for the Scottish National Party. That's SMP, that's Nicholas Sturgeon. In the general election. Also, apparently I'm cool. Anyway, um Use the wacky brush to make a moving picture. Moopy. This is quite fun actually. Because it's like the regular kid picks, except everything you draw is animated. And of course, you still have the stamps. You've got letters. I think that's probably what it is. There we go. And then we have this looks like a dog. <laughs> Look like loud. And you've got foxes and that. So yep, yeah, there's there's your uh, moving pictures. I don't know if the pencil does anything. Nope, it's just a pencil. It draws. I guess not everything can move. Well, that's a moopy. Pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, Drag stamps across the screen and they'll keep moving. That is pretty cool. So, um, I guess. There you go. It's like you've made your own animation. So we've, we've drawn a bit of ground for uh, that. Uh, <laughs> I've got a moonwalking squirrel. <laughs> I was walking backwards at least. So, um. Here's an owl. Oh, seems to have deleted the other. Oh well. Anyway, the last bit is the animation part. Make the puppet move by typing on the keyboard. <laughs> See, and um, you can actually record your voice to this, and if you can actually time it with the moving of the mouth of the puppet, then it's actually pretty cool. What on earth? That wasn't supposed to. Uh, yeah, I think that went horribly, horribly wrong there. Oh well. Oh, yeah, it's. It's Garfunkel that sell. <laughs> Uh, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Shush, copyright. <laughs> anyway, um, apart from uh, that, where it kind of messed all over itself, uh, that has been a wee review, in fact, a very long review of the ThinkPad um, 560Z. Yeah. Um, either of you guys have anything to say? It's well, uh, <laughs> yeah, but we'll, we'll let Luke take this one because I don't know much about ThinkPads. Well, having looked at um, my friend Grant from 42's, uh, what was it, PS No something? I forget what, what all was in it, but comparing this to that, it seems like they really, the ThinkPads really sort of, uh, what am I trying to say? They, they sort of evolved into their own style, like they, they truly did by this point. Because if you look at it, this style of ThinkPad looks so similar to the newer ones, at least up to like the T61, the X201, the T420. It, it really just, it, it just stayed just like that. So it like did. The There's really not much difference. 
between. I like that. Yeah, it's mm. nice to see consistency when something is really done, really, really good. I must admit, I do, I do like that. You know, it's like you know, you can tell it's a ThinkPad. You know, I mean, there's there's no dispute in it nowadays. You get laptops that all look the same. You know, I've got, you know, I've seen like Acer's that look like Toshiba's, Hewlett Packard's that look like MacBooks, and it's. They're, they're just all, you know, a lot of machines are just kind of starting to look very generic. They are. I mean, there's a lot of copycat stuff going on because it's it's it like it's like the design aspect of a computer is now more of a trend than an actual like, art. And that's just um, like I've noticed that Asus laptops actually look a lot like Toshiba laptops now. They do actually. Now you mentioned that. Now the thing is, a lot of people don't like the look of these ThinkPads. Do you know what? I'm going to go all out there and I'm going to say that actually, I love the way ThinkPads look. You know, I I just do. Okay, guilty is charged. <laughs> <laughs> Even. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. I mean, these these were designed not necessarily to look good, but to behave well. You know, to be good machines for the business. You know, it is IBM. B and IBM stands for business, international business machines. You know, so on that front, you know, the ThinkPad really does deliver. I think the 600 series, the 500, 600, 300 series, I think they were the last kind of good think pads before IBM started going a bit down the hill with the T20 series. But the X24 is a good machine. Brilliant example of the breed. Um, you know, it's it's like they had the blip with the T the early T series machines like the T20 or, and the A and the A series, you know, like the A21s. They were pretty bad. But then, you know, in the mid 2000s it started picking back up again. Now, originally, I used to think that Lenovo, having bought it, would actually make the quality suffer. But in actual fact, it turns out, for the first time since 1974, don't ask how, I'm wrong. Because... But all these kind of stayed the same, really. Yeah. In fact, I think, in some cases, it's gotten better. I couldn't... I, I kind of agree, but I couldn't tell you how it's better. I mean, to me, it's, it's like... Uh, I think... I think I know what it is. Like small refinements made here and there, little details. I think I know what it is. It's not necessarily something that Lenovo have did that IBM couldn't have done. I think it's the timescale in which Lenovo actually bought the ThinkPad line. See, in the 90s, there was IBM ThinkPads. Being from the 90s, they had 90s hinges, 90s plastic. Which, as anyone who collects old computers and anyone who used laptop computers in the 90s will know, you're just kind of asking for something to go wrong. Now, with, you know, obviously, you know, time has actually kind of improved the quality of the machine. Generally, your machine will stay together now. Mm -hmm. And Lenovo has done a brilliant job of keeping the quality there in ThinkPads. You know, the business like quality. Now, I did have an R61 whose plastic cracked around the optical drive and it did leave me a wee bit less than impressed. But, you know, if that's the only thing that'll go wrong on the machine, when there's users of HP's kind of, you know, setting up their machine only to find that the thing won't ever switch on again. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah, I think... I it's similar. Like my think my newer ThinkPad X one forty E has a crack right by the HDMI port because I put an adapter in there to push the plastic a little too much. So it seems like plastic cracking and plastic breaking is an issue I've had with ThinkPads, but it's it's not as bad as some of the consumer stuff where clips break and hold the whole thing together. Yeah, yeah no. I'd rather have um I'd rather have a little crack in the case than a crack in the motherboard. Yeah, <laughs> I mean this. This is the thing. I mean, the crack on my R sixty one, R sixty one i, um, 
you couldn't really see it because it was on, on the underside of the machine. So it really doesn't affect the machine's usage at all. You know, I mean, I gave my R61i away to someone who needed it. There's a reason I went back and bought another R61. They're just amazing machines. And, you know, I mean, I do use a ThinkPad as my daily driver now. Not the R61, but I do have a ThinkPad that I use. And, um, you know, I'm just really, really happy with it. You know, it's it's really quite quick. Um, you know, and it's it's very nice to type on. And it just feels like a wee bit... It, it just feels like a quality better kit. And it's modern, yet somehow it's still a ThinkPad. You know? I use, I use a Dell. The Dell <laughs> Latitudes are good. <laughs> <laughs> Dell Latitudes are fantastic as well. Yeah, especially the E6420. Yeah, you see, I think with the later E-series, I mean, unfortunately, I think the Latitudes kind of went down a, down a bit the way, you know, with the, the early D-series machines, uh, XP era, you know, Sanyo batteries that kind of like to combust spontaneously. Um, yeah. Even happened to my uh, PowerBook G4, I have that battery. Yeah, just in the mid-2000s, everything went out for a rip. Yeah, like, even, even computer motherboards. <laughs> and we were... I mean, the mid-2000s, I mean, I, I often say, like, you know, you can find 90s machines now, you know, that still work. Where are we going to be in 10 years' time? Are we going to find mid-2000s machines? Yes, I believe we will, but there just won't be anywhere near as many, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, you'll probably still be able to get these uh, black XP Dells. You know, they, they're they pretty well built. You know, and, and... Yeah, really. You know, after... Like the 2350, Dell actually went to use uh, solid state capacitors on the boards, you know, which will help the longevity of the machines. Did the 20? Well, well, it leaves me out. <laughs> Hang on, did um, did the 2400 have solid caps? Um, I can't. Remember. I don't know. 2350 will just have to replace them after a while, but. Yeah, I mean, I got Billy a replacement motherboard for his twenty three fifty because the motherboard went. Dun, 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 <laughs> Should have bought him a forty six hundred motherboard instead because it has an AGP yeah, slot. Yeah, but, but my OCD would um, drive me insane. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I can, I can, in all honesty, allow that to happen. I know how it feels to live with anxiety. It's. It's oh, it's terrible. It's horrible. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, turning my Dimension 2350 on and seeing Dimension 4600 appear on the uh, on the bio screen would just um, drive me into insanity. <laughs> Have Yellow go and replace the CPU for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you got a Dell Latitude C500, put a Pentium 3 in it. Uh, reg no, C510 was it? And, and then he put a Pentium 3 CPU in it and it registered it as, as a C610. Mm. Anyway, I think this video has dragged on for long enough now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please feel free to subscribe. And please feel free to like my page on Facebook. Thank you all for watching. And I hope you'll all join me for my next video.